Hi there, I'm Doc, Cable Tool Technician at Lyman's Testing Laboratories. Today I'm going to walk you through how to conduct a visual inspection of your grounding equipment and related parts and show you what happens when you send in your equipment to Lyman's for testing and repair. While in the field, before you begin any work, conduct a visual inspection of your grounding equipment. According to CSA Z462-15, for visual inspection, temporary protective grounding equipment shall be inspected before initial use for cuts in the protective sheath and damage to the conductors. Clamps and connector strain relief devices shall be checked before initial use for tightness. These inspections shall be conducted thereafter as service conditions require, but at least every 12 months or as dictated by your company policy. You should also check for cracked or broken ferrules and clamps, exposed strands, cut or badly flattened cable, a swollen cable jacket, or soft spots which could indicate internal corrosion, plus cable strands with black deposit on them. If there is a defect or damage, remove it from service until repairs and necessary tests have been conducted by a qualified person. When storing your ground equipment, we recommend that you leave it off the ground to avoid dirt, dust, or other contaminants that could end up getting into the ground equipment. So for best practice, we recommend that you keep them coiled in a bag or coiled and put on a hook to avoid creasing. When you send your ground equipment in to LTL for service, we first create a customer record for your equipment. We then visually inspect the protective grounding jumper assemblies in accordance to ASTM F2249-03, Section 5. We inspect the cable installation for structural defects, cuts, or abrasions. Any damage that is detected that may compromise the cable performance should be a cause for rejection. We inspect the cable for broken strands and bird caging. We also look for signs of tracking. If the markings cannot be removed, the jumper cable shall be rejected. Surface abnormalities that don't affect the part performance are not a cause for rejection. We inspect the jumpers for cracked, broken ferrules or clamps. Check all physical connections for tightness. If a grounding jumper assembly is found defective, it shall be removed from service and tagged. A grounding jumper assembly that was repaired must be visually inspected once all repairs are complete before any electrical tests are performed. The cleaning of your grounding jumper assembly shall be performed in accordance to ASTM F2249-03, Section 6. We thoroughly clean the jumper clamps with a wire brush, especially all moving contact surfaces, and we wipe down the cable jacket to remove any trace of dirt or contaminants. Before being returned to service, grounds that have been repaired or modified shall be tested. After cleaning, all ground assemblies and tested devices are stored in a clean and dry area. To minimize the impedance effect of AC testing, the grounding jumper assembly under test shall be laid out in a tight parallel configuration in the manner shown here. Attach the grounding jumper assembly clamps firmly to the test unit. and apply current to the grounding jumper assembly for a period of one minute in accordance to the table shown here. Thanks for watching. For more information, visit www.ltl.ca or call 1-800-299-9769.